What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So I'm gonna check out wrestling records in WWE. No wrestler wants to break. This should be a very interesting one, uh, since you guys say uh, that's my catchphrase. So I might as well go along with it. Uh, this should actually be an interesting one to see these records that obviously wrestlers wouldn't want to break. So I, I definitely want to see what list WrestleMania was able to come up with. Appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. We're gonna get right into this one. Let's check it out. WWE records nobody wants to break. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. The most disliked WWE YouTube clip of all time. Now after the Royal Rumble at yep. the start of 2024, WWE aired a segment on SmackDown which broke the internet. In the segment, Cody Rhodes would announce that he was giving up his WrestleMania spot that he had earned in the annual Royal Rumble match and instead The Rock was taking his spot in the match. The segment was confusing, nonsensical, and yeah. ultimately made the babyface, that being the American Nightmare, look utterly stupid. The backlash to the booking move was instant and notable, as the segment within a matter of days became the single most disliked mm -hmm. upload on WWE's official YouTube channel. As things stand, the segment has almost 750,000 <laughs> dislikes, a truly insane number, and the number continues to grow on a daily basis. The reception to this segment was so overwhelmingly negative that WWE were forced to pivot and change direction. The planned Rock vs Roman Reigns match was scrapped and WWE proceeded to book a heel turn for The Rock and Rhodes vs Reigns Part 2 was the new direction for WrestleMania 40. The most losses- Which worked. It worked. Apparently, uh, it had came out that Cody was supposed to be a little bit more happier about what, you know, you know, giving up his spot to The Rock, apparently. But obviously you can tell he wasn't. And when I initially saw this, I was like, is this, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of any rational reason why he would do that. Like it, maybe there's going to be some type of, uh, you know, uh, he, he going to find a way to help out Cody. I don't know. I was trying to find any reasonable way why, why Cody would even do such a thing, but they course corrected and it worked. We have the final boss, the, the heel version of the rock. It's, Honestly, some of the best work he's done in a very long time. Cody is the champion. It was a great story at WrestleMania. It worked. And I've said this before. Sometimes the best stuff, the best ideas or the best situations happen off of Audible. Off of, okay, we got to change plans. And it ultimately works even better than what they anticipated. So, obviously, yeah, that I don't think anyone's going to break that record for a very long time. The most disliked WWE YouTube video. is In WWE history, whilst WWE is scripted, wins and losses are key to keeping a wrestler credible. Yeah. Logic would assume that a wrestler with the most losses in WWE history would be a lower card talent or even an enhancement talent. However, in reality, the dishonor goes to a former two-time WWE champion. The name in question is former WWE champion The Miz, who Damn. has lost over 1,300 matches. As of this video, exactly 1,335 matches. Damn. This is throughout his WWE tenure. This is a statistic and a record that is unlikely to ever be broken. The record was even used in a storyline as it was referred to numerous times in 2023 that The Miz was on a consistent and prominent losing streak. Despite having this record, it hasn't impacted Miz's credibility too much as due to Miz's star power and promo ability, he's able to present himself as credible with one brief yet intense promo. And, and that's pretty much what saves The Miz is his promo ability is charisma that's what saves him because when you really think about it that's a ridiculous amount of losses but this guy is a multiple he's a two-time wwe champion <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's just it's just one of those things where people tend to forget about how many times you've lost over your career if you're able to give a good promo and hype somebody up, you know hype up a match that's always been the miss hit miss's strong suit is not his in-ring ability it's his ability to sell you on a match or hype you up through promos that's that's what helps the miss the worst drawing wwe champion of all time oh no Winning wwe's top prize should uh -oh. be the height of a wrestler's career <laughs> however if the rain fails to catch fire and fails to capture the excitement of the fans it can be highly detrimental to the wrestler's aura and legacy the record for the worst drawing wwe champion of all time unfortunately goes to kevin nash mm -hmm. aka diesel 
Diesel's WWE title reign in the mid-90s came at a time in which WWE product was struggling to find an audience. Yep. Attendance was down, ratings were plummeting, and the wrestling audience had decided that the WCW product was the wrestling product that they were going to invest their time yep. and money into. WWE executive Bruce Pritchard spoke on his podcast regarding claims of Diesel being the worst drawing champion in company history, and this is what he had to say. People put the heat on Diesel. Uh, I did. I, I remember the the night that we went to shoot the angle with Goldust and Razor in Portland, Maine, or Bangor, Maine, and Vince was in with Razor and Goldust or whatever, and I'm outside with with Hunter and Diesel, and Diesel says, "You know, I'm the the lowest earning WWF champion of all time." I said, "Well, it goes hand in hand with." The lowest drawing WWF champion. And Kevin and I had a few heated words at that point. Oh, shit. And you, you look back and, and it's true. Yeah. When you truly look at it in hindsight and you look at it with fresh eyes in a fair assessment, he didn't inherit. No, he didn't inherit anything. He inherited uh, the championship at a time where the business was at a low point and there wasn't an awful lot you know, for him to work with from yep. that point, moving ahead. Whilst it's hard to argue against the cult. Yeah, and it's just one of those, it's just one of those things where, you know, he was the champion at a, at a wrong time, to be honest, which I guess you can say um, with WWC, WCW's rise and popularity, and they they not really having much for uh, him to do that would make fans want to tune in to check out <laughs> Kevin Nash as the champion, the top guy, you know, it's, it's a combination of things, you know, so, you know, for him to get all of the heat there, it's not really fair, especially in hindsight, it's just WWE was having a, a low point around that time. Old hard facts that Diesel was the worst drawing champion in history, he did manage to become a legitimate drawer later in his career. Yeah. The most losses at WrestleMania. WrestleMania is WWE's premier event, and it's in a wrestler's best interest if they have a credible win-loss record at the big event. In relation to which WWE wrestler holds the record for the most losses at the signature event, it's surprisingly Triple H. Mm, this comes as a I surprise figured. as it's been a common misconception for years that Triple H never put over talent, and it's often claimed that he buried talent during the height of his career. During his career at WrestleMania, the game has put over names such as Batista, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and even the Ultimate Warrior. The game but not Booker T when they should have. But we can, you know, we, we've been down that road before. <laughs> has lost 13 times in total, which is crazy to think about. Damn. A wrestler losing this many times at WrestleMania is unlikely to ever be replicated, especially in an era where it's actively encouraged times? by fans Damn. that wrestlers obtain a WrestleMania win at one point in their career. The most chair shots to the head. But once again, it's Triple H. Even though he's lost that many times at WrestleMania, he still has a legendary career, and people don't really too much pay attention to it because it's fucking Triple H. So, Ed in a single match, the I Quit match between The Rock and Mankind at 1999's Royal Rumble is one of the most infamous matches uh -huh. in WWE history. The match featured Mankind taking oh a total of gosh. 11 brutal chair shots oh to the head. Gosh. Unfortunately, the match is aged like milk, as a ton of oh. research over the past two decades has been done in relation to concussions and the impact of chair shots. Thankfully, chair shots of this nature have been banned in WWE, mm -hmm. and WWE will never book a wrestler to take severe punishment no. like this ever again. This is a sinister and borderline disturbing record, and one that will thankfully never be broken in WWE. Yeah, that was nah, bro. That's just just if you watch that that match back, that clip, that whole situation is hard to watch, bro. It's just un it's different when you're taking protected chair shots. Unprotected chair shots is just brutal, bro. There's no way to fake that. You just Jesus, man. Just mm. it was a different time in wrestling. I'm glad boys don't have to do that anymore, nor should they, because you know concussions are a real thing. CT is a real thing, and you know we don't we want the wrestlers to have a a a good lifestyle after they wrestle, not to be forgetting things and having all types of brain trauma because you took so many damn unprotected chair shots in your career. Worst WWE match ever. A Dave Meltzer star ratings have always led to discourse online, and it goes without saying that no wrestler wants Meltzer to award their match with a negative star rating. Numerous matches throughout WWE history have been awarded uh, with a negative star rating, not and that's this writing Ugh, the yeesh. worst match in WWE history, according to Meltzer's star ratings, 
is Mr. T versus Roddy Piper from WrestleMania 2, which received a minus five star rating. <laughs> the match Damn. itself was a 13 minute boxing match and it completely died in front of a live audience. Fans hated it and not even the incredibly charismatic Piper could save it from being a total disaster. It could certainly be argued that due to the match being a boxing match, it doesn't count as a WWE match. Yeah. And if that is indeed the case, then the record for the worst WWE match ever goes to another minus five star match. Minus five. Dog Spot versus Junkyard Dog from the Wrestling Classic from 1985. The dreadful matchup lasted just 45 merciful seconds, and it made WWE and the two aforementioned wrestlers look completely incompetent. The least Did attended. Did he count the pin himself? Where was the rest? <laughs> <laughs> Negative five stars is just insanity. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, count it the wind himself, I guess. I don't know. WWE pay-per-view main event. When a wrestler main events a pay-per-view event, they hope their respective match is strong enough and interesting enough to draw a huge crowd. Mm -hmm. Holding the record for being the least attended WWE pay-per-view main event of all time is a terrible look for a wrestler, and it's interesting to dissect exactly why the pay-per-view had a lack of interest. The record for the lowest attended WWE pay-per-view in history goes to Taboo Tuesday 2004. Mm. This was the first ever Taboo Tuesday event and it was attended by 3,500 fans, which was low even for a live event and yeah. find a major WWE pay-per-view. The show was a brand new concept, so fans likely didn't know what to expect. And of course, the show taking place on a Tuesday yeah. certainly didn't help draw in a substantial. Yeah, I mean, it's taking place in like <laughs> the beginning of the week, work week. People got to go to work. Man. People ain't worrying about being at a damn wrestling show. That's why wrestling shows are better, you know, depending on what you're trying to do. You can get away with a Wednesday night type situation. You can, I mean, you can say the same thing about a Monday, too. You could, but um, we're talking in relations to back then. It was unheard of to have a wrestling show on a Tuesday night right after you have Monday Night Raw. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't common and it to be a pay-per-view and they didn't know what it was. Maybe if it was a different name that people were familiar with, it probably would have worked. But Taboo Tuesday, they didn't know what it was. Monday Night Raw just happened. Why would we go here? You know, it, it, it's a lot of things that made that a, a low attending show. Because um, just people didn't really understand the, crowd. the gimmick. The show was main evented by Randy Orton versus Ric Flair, and the fans were allowed to pick the match type for the main event, and they ultimately opted to go with a steel cage encounter. The match itself was vastly underrated, yet WWE's call not to go with a world title match in the main event slot was yeah. a bizarre one from a business that perspective. Too. The concept did somewhat work for WWE, as although the attendance was abysmal, the attendance the following year was 6,000, which was mm -hmm. a vast improvement. WWE did eventually decide that whilst the concept worked, the Tuesday slot for a pay-per-view wasn't going to work, so from 2006 onwards, the fan interactive pay-per-view would be moved to Sunday and rebranded as Cyber Sunday. Yeah, which was works. It works way better, you know, do Cyber Sunday, because having that pay-per-view on a Tuesday, like I said, having a regular show on a Tuesday back then was still kind of... You know, foreign, you didn't really see too much, but having a pay-per-view on a Tuesday, it's like, hmm, what? It's worth noting that this record relates to WWE pay-per-view events that took place outside of the COVID-19 era, as obviously fans weren't permitted to attend events during this time, so mm -hmm. attendance figures can't be analyzed. The shortest WWE title reign. This record relates to strictly the WWE title, as opposed to any other world title WWE has introduced over the years. When a wrestler wins the WWE title, they hope that WWE will proceed to book them in a lengthy reign that lasts several months, or even longer if the title reign is popular with fans. Mm -hmm. The legendary wrestler who holds the record for the shortest WWE title reign of all time is Andre the Giant. When Andre defeated Hulk Hogan in 1980, you sold it. <laughs> you win the championship and then you sell it off like it's some fucking... <laughs> Like some type of fucking item you get in a garage sale. I don't want this shit no more. Here you go. That's wild. <laughs> this would mark Andre's first and only WWE title reign in his iconic career, and it couldn't even last two minutes. So this did record all. has a strong possibility of being broken, and it would likely be shattered thanks to the involvement of the Money in the Bank briefcase. If a wrestler wins the WWE title, then is instantly cashed in on. Uh -huh. There's a distinct possibility that it takes the Money in the Bank holder less than 1 minute 48 seconds to yeah. get the job done. But there you have it, folks. That's WWE wild, record. bro. I, I didn't even know that. 
I that's something that was new to me. I didn't know my man sold the only ch WWE Championship reign he ever had with that title. He sold it off. Eh, thanks, man. Here you go. What? <laughs> that's fucking crazy, bro. Nigga had it for a minute. I don't want this shit here. Give me my money. <laughs> hey, man. Comment down below. Let me know. Do y'all know any other, like, WWE records that people would not want to break? I'm sure y'all are pretty knowledgeable with your WWE information. So, if you know any other records that y'all feel like could have been on this uh, video, as well as records that people definitely wouldn't want to break, y'all let me know down below. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. And I'm still here on Speed of YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you next one. Peace.